in this uh, session let's start uh, looking at uh, the options market uh, especially uh, the aspects relating uh, to the valuations of the options and uh, how do i create arbitrage opportunities using uh, options and uh, a few more aspects relating to the greeks of the option so like uh, talking about uh, uh, the delta the vega the rho all these kind of greeks that are associated with the options so and even we will uh, talk about uh, <coughs> the impact of various underlying factors on uh, the option pricing and finally uh, also we will uh, uh, discuss a little bit about the options on forwards and future contracts so these are uh, some of the aspects that we are uh, working out uh, here we'll uh, go step by step the valuations uh, again there are the as far as the valuation is concerned probably we are uh, looking at option valuations uh, for equity options for bond options or even for uh, interest rate related securities interest rate related options so there are uh, so many uh, applications and again in the valuation methods we'll look at uh, different kinds of methods so that's how we will uh, take this entire session wherever uh, excel based uh, demonstrations are required even those things will be looked at so let's get uh, started into the session now the first thing uh, as far as uh, this is uh, this session is concerned is one of the most important aspects in uh, uh, in uh, option pricing is the put call parity relationship so what does that put call parity uh, relationship talk about the cost of the fiduciary call should be the same as the cost of the protective put what is a fiduciary call having a call option plus purchasing a call option plus a risk free bond having a risk free bond a call option plus having a risk free bond is what we are calling as a fiduciary call having the underlying plus a put option is what we call as <coughs> a protective put strategy typically long stock plus long put is what is the protective put strategy and uh, the long call plus long bond is what uh, we call as a fiduciary call strategy and what it uh, says is because the payoffs of these two things are the same we can very well uh, say their present values which is c plus x by 1 plus r to the power t which is like having a buying a call option today and having a cash to the worth of x by 1 plus r to the power t it should be the same as the spot price of the stock plus the put option price so this relationship is what we are calling as the call put parity relationship right now <coughs> the goodness of this relationship is you can do small arithmetics like okay if i want c only you can say s plus p minus x by 1 plus r to the power t what does this mean to me c is nothing but the call option so c can be created without c by using a combination of these three items that is what uh, is the meaning of the synthetic call option means i am synthetically able to create the position of a call option without using the call option using these three 
so how can i create that position probably a long call position if i want long this side i will go for i'll go for long stock means i'll buy the share plus long put i'll buy a put option on the share and short bond short bond is i am selling a bond selling a bond or issuing a bond issuing a bond <coughs> and raising capital using that capital i am buying a share as well as buying a put option so when i have done this kind of an exercise the payoff is exactly similar to that of a call option so that is where we call this kind of uh, settlements as the synthetic position so when i am talking about buying a call it's as good as uh, buying a put buying the stock and shorting a riskless pure discount bond whose uh, value is equal to the present value of the exercise price so in that case we are creating the position of a call option without using the call option same way you can play around right similarly if i want uh, the put uh, option i can very well create it as c plus x by 1 plus r to the power t minus s which is as good as i can synthetically create a put option by going long on the call buying the mm, buying a bond <coughs> and selling shorting a stock right now so this position will synthetically create a put option position now why are we discussing about these positions the most important thing that we are going to derive from this is see for the put option also there is a market price and there is one price which we are able to compute using this synthetic position so if the synthetic as well as actuals if there is a difference between these two for that matter any position we can actually create four synthetic positions we can create synthetic call synthetic bond synthetic stock synthetic put any of these uh, four synthetic positions for each of them there is a separate price that it is available at where it is getting traded in the market now i can compute the price of it using a synthetic uh, mechanism i have just now uh, we have uh, just now looked at now if there is a big difference in the price of the original as well as the synthetic created that is where people can exploit profits by either buying the synthetic and selling the original or selling the synthetic and buying the original how can we exploit that kind of an opportunity that is what i will look at with this small numerical example let's say right now a 6 month call option with an exercise price of 220 is currently trading at 25 okay let's uh, take it down to a spreadsheet so we are talking about 6 month call option right exercise price of 220 so x is given as 220 trading at 25 so the call option price is 25 the current stock price is 210 <coughs> so yes i can take it as 210 then what else assuming a risk free rate of 6% calculate the price of the synthetic put option now you tell me how i should compute the synthetic put option c plus x by e power rt or x by 1 plus r to the power t present value of x 
minus s that is what is the synthetic value of the put option okay c plus x by 1 plus r to the power t here i am talking about 6 months so i will take it as 1 plus r to the power t minus s so this is what is coming out as the price of a put option based on this call put parity relationship now let me assume that the actual market price so this is how i derive the no arbitrage price of the put option using the call put parity relationship means ideally ideally the put option price for this kind of a stock should be or for this kind of an option on this kind of a stock should be 28.68 but let me assume two scenarios the put option price in the market is 32 versus put option price in the market is 25 so what would we do this is the actual these are the two various uh, scenarios suggesting the actual price of the put option in the market now how do i use this opportunity what i would be doing is if it is 32 i will make a strategy saying sell put and buy or go long on the synthetic because synthetic is 28.68 the original is 32 so what i will say is sell the original and buy the synthetic so when i am buying the synthetic what is happening okay let's look at the transaction now buy a call so when i am buying a call it is costing me 25 bucks buy a stock when i am uh, sorry sell a stock right sell stock that is the synthetic position so when i am selling a stock i am going to get 210 i am shorting it today when i am buying a call i am paying 25 I am shorting a stock today. I am getting 210 and I am talking about buy a bond who's uh, uh, with a cash x by 1 plus r to the power t. So 220 by 1 plus r to the power 0.5. So have 213 rupees using 213 rupees buy a bond so what is happening today you just look at this position now you have right now sold a stock right you have right now sold a stock 200 and you got 210 bucks with that 210 bucks you have actually a thought of buying a bond wherein uh, uh, which would be uh, costing you 213 bucks and you are also thinking of buying a call option which is worth 25 so what is the uh, what is the overall transaction in this case <coughs> in this case your overall transaction cost or your overall cost is around 28.68 bucks but you have sold one put option because you have sold one put option you are going to get 32 bucks today means you are already net you are already net 3.31 positive today right now look at uh, after six months what is going to happen after six months whatever may be the market price right you can assume uh, any market price on that day we have sold a put and we have bought a call for the same exercise price now this bond 
after six months will give me 220 bucks right because I have bought a bond on the maturity it is going to give me 220 bucks assume that on that day the stock price it may go up to 225 or 200 or whatever it is we can assume any number assume that the stock price is going to 225 because you have sold a stock now you have to buy it back there so assume that you are buying it back at 225 you are losing 15 and at the same time you have bought a call option for a strike price of 220 but the market price has gone to 225 so you are going to get a benefit of 5 there so this is what is your position there and look at uh, selling a put you have sold a put option for 220 and the other party because you have uh, sold a put option uh, for 220 the other party will because the market price is 225 the other party will not exercise the put at all so what you are left with on that day is 225 minus uh, 15 210 is what you are uh, left with so what is typically uh, happening is whatever may be the scenario on that on that maturity date there is no loss that you are incurring because uh, the, the as per as far as uh, this you are buying a call you are because you have bought a call you are buying the stock at a predetermined uh, price itself so you have to buy it at 220 itself on that day so you, you are buying the stock at 220 you are uh, uh, because you have bought a call as well as sold uh, sold a stock you can even uh, buy back the stock at 220 having a profit so what is typically uh, happening in this uh, transaction is you can create an arbitrage profit by directly entering into selling a put option and buying uh, the synthetic or vice versa right because uh, on that day you will have 220 bucks using that 220 bucks look at it simple on that day you will have 220 bucks because the bond will give you 220 and uh, you need to buy back the call buy back buy back the stock and you can buy it at 220 because you have already bought a call option so you can buy it exactly at 220 on that day so this entire transaction you are ending up with zero because you are buying the stock at 220 and the bond has given you 220 so you are left with a zero position after six months and this put option will get expired so you are left with a zero position after six months whereas today you are having a positive position of 3.31 3.31 uh, 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 dollars so because of this you have logged in a profit today without any kind of a risk in future whether the market price let's say on that day the stock price goes to 200 you will not exercise your call option rather you will uh, buy back your stock at 200 right from the market if the market price goes down right you you will not exercise the call option you will buy the stock at 200 from the market whereas uh, because you have sold a put for 220 the other party will sell the stock at 220 right because you have uh, sold a, a put the other party has bought the put so when the market price is down the party will exercise it so the party will sell the stock at 220 uh, for you whereas uh, your bond has given you 220 so you can uh, use that 220 to buy the stock from the other party so either way you are left with a zero on that expiry date 
which means uh, there is no profit or loss uh, for you after 6 months means there is no risk involved in the transaction whereas today there is a locked up profit of 3.31 so wherever such kind of arbitrage wherever such kind of difference is existing between the synthetic price as well as the market price we can very well lock up an arbitrage profit by selling the cheaper by selling the uh, costlier one and buying the cheaper position that is uh, one of the major advantages that we can derive using the synthetics all right now comes the next important uh, aspect where we are getting into the valuations of the options it's always uh, better to uh, directly take an example and uh, work out the valuations so for that what i would uh, look out for is okay we will use the concept of the binomial tree model first what does this binomial tree model talk about it talks about from any particular point let's say today the stock price is some x from any particular point <coughs> the stock price will have two possible values after a certain period of time t the stock price will have two certain values after uh, a point in time so it can either uh, go for some increase or it can go for some decrease and uh, there is a probability of an upward movement and there is some probability of a downward movement so this is what we actually call as the stock price tree so this can be built for any number of periods like this right from here okay after one period if the price has actually gone up the next period it can either go up and up or probably uh, come up plus down or if it has already gone down it can go to down plus up or it can come down further with two down like that n period tree can be created and what we are also saying is because we create two possible paths from every particular node we call this kind of a model as a binomial tree model so using some uh, processes you are probably using some factors up factor and down factor we actually generate a stock price tree first and this stock price tree is always recombining it's a very important uh, word to talk about the stock price tree is recombining what this means is from an up if there is a down or from a down if there is an up both of them will reach the same location both of them will reach the same price such kind of tree is called as a recombining tree so in case of binomial trees we build recombining trees only so if we are building one period tree we will have two end values or two uh, final leaf nodes and if i am building a two period tree i'll have three leaf nodes and similarly if i am building an n period binomial tree i am having n plus 1 leaf nodes this is one thing that uh, we need to understand so as a first step in the, any binomial tree approach depending on whether i am building a one period tree or a two period tree or an n period tree first i will complete the stock prices i'll fill it with the stock prices based on the two information one is i need to know what is the up and down movements up and down movements at each node there are different ways of computing this 
and I also need to know the probabilities of going up and down. So once I know these two things, I can generate a stock price tree. Once the stock price tree is generated, this is generated generally for the period of the option expiry until this tree is created until the option expiry period. So the, the final date, this particular time period should correspond to the option expiry date. Now what we say is, okay, there are some, there is some probability that the stock price will touch this, some probability that the stock price will touch this, some probability that the stock price will touch this price. Now, if it touches this, if it touches this, what is the payoff of the call option or a put option? If it touches this, what is the payoff? And if it touches this, what is the payoff? Because when I talk about a European uh, option, the exercise is always on the last uh, expiry date. So, what I would simply uh, look at is, Assuming that the exercise is uh, happening on this last date, wherein any one of these prices can come with some probability, I will try to find out what would be the payoff on the option in case the stock price touches this, in case the stock price touches this and in case the stock price touches this. So I will get the payoffs at each of the positions. So from this, I will try to find out what is the expected payoff for this combination of node. What is the expected payoff for this combination of the node? So it's like a weighted average. Get it back by discounting it by one period. Get this back by discounting it by one period. Now again, there is some probability of getting this payoff there is some other probability of getting this payoff. What is the expected value of the payoff as on this date? Discount it by one more period to get the expected value of the payoff as on this date. And that is the value of the option. Right? So let me take one uh, example which will uh, clarify the entire process. Uh, that would be more uh, easier to deal with. Okay, here, let's assume the current stock price is 50. Right, we'll try to deal all possible combinations now. Okay, let's say the current stock price is 50. And uh, we are talking about an exercise price of the call option also as 50. The 6 month, so the maturity period, time to maturity is uh, 6 months or probably I will take it as half year. And the risk free rate of return is annual 6%, 6% per year. And uh, <coughs> it is also given that the up factor right in case the six month up factor this is a six month up factor so six month up factor i'm taking it as 1.2 and the option is also a six month option means it's only a one period tree i can build a one period tree because the up factor it is given for six months for six months there is a jump off uh, from one uh, jump uh, by a factor of 1.2 and all I require is a 6 month uh, call option pricing itself. So generally in this kind of a mechanism where the up factor is given the down factor can be computed basically as 1 by up factor. So the down factor generally wherever uh, even the information is not provided the down factor you can very well compute it as 1 by up factor this is attributed to the behavior of 
a recombining binomial tree. So I will compute the down factor as 1 upon the up factor. So I have this. So now that uh, we are talking about option expiry also 6 months and uh, the up uh, factor uh, of 1.2 is applicable for 6 months. So I need only a 1 period binomial tree. Whereas if it had been said that the option expiry is 6 months but the up factor is for 3 months then I will create 2 3 months periods to take my uh, to take my tree up to the expiration of the option in that case it will become a, a 2 period binomial tree but now I can go ahead with a 1 period binomial tree itself so in this case what I would do the current stock price is 50 and it can go first we are building a stock price tree the current stock price is 50 it can go up by a factor of 1.2 means after one period here one period is six months because up factor is a six monthly factor so after six months i am assuming that the stock price can touch 60 or i am also assuming that it can touch the down factor what is uh, 41.66 so it can either touch 60 or it can touch 41.66 that is the first step in the building process now the next thing is I want to find out the payoffs at each of the layers what if so these are the equivalent uh, points right I will create for the payoff here what if the stock price touches 60 what is the payoff because this is a call option and the stock price is touching uh, 60 there is a payoff of the difference the stock price minus the strike price will be the payoff so stock price minus the strike price is what I am taking as the payoff. So if the stock price touches 60, the payoff is going to be 10. Whereas if the stock price touches 41, the option will be expired because uh, uh, we are talking about call option. The option will be expired. So the payoff is going to be 0. So on the last node, we will compute this kind of payoffs that's the next step then okay i also need to find out what is the probability of up and what is the probability of down so the normal case the probability of up right again there is a formula that is existing for finding out the probability of an up movement up movement always comes with 1 plus r minus d by u minus d where r denotes your risk free rate of return and for that particular period only that is one thing you have to be careful of r rep represents the periodic rate of return it may be given that the annual rate of return but we have to be careful we have to take only for the 6 monthly period. So that is where I will go with 1 plus R. Or probably I will do it as RT which will take it directly. 1 plus R minus D divided by U minus D. So this is a, again a general approximation in terms of the up movement and the down movement so I am assuming that here the up movement the probability of going up is around 0.53 whereas the probability of going down is 1 minus that which is around 0.46 so there is a 46.3% chance that the stock price will go down 
and there is a 53.6 percent chance that the stock price will go up which means there is a 53.6 percent chance that i will get a 10 payoff and there is a 46.3 percent chance that my payoff is going to be zero so from that perspective i will compute the expected payoff Okay, so there is a 53.6% chance of a payoff of 10 and there is a 46% chance of a payoff of 0. So the expected value of the payoff is 5.36. This expected, this average value of the payoff of 5.36 comes after six months right on that day of maturity this is the payoff that i am going to get so i want to find out the present value of that payoff which means i will divide this by one plus r to the power t one plus r to the power t so it is coming out to be around 5.2 or 5.21 this is what we attribute to the call price of a call option price of a call option we say it is it should be around 5.21 then what if what if the price of the call option right price of the call option if in the market it is only 4 <coughs> if it is uh, only 4 in the market how can I create a kind of arbitrage profit because whenever we are seeing that the price of in the market is much different from the price which we are creating how do we take the advantage of that for that, we actually create a position called delta. Delta is nothing but the we, we, we look at the if the call price goes, I mean if the market price goes up, what is going to be the payoff minus if the market price goes down what is going to be the call option payoff similarly divided by what are the possible changes in the stock price s plus minus s minus this is what will give me what i call as delta the call option price when it goes up i mean the payoff probably look at it uh, not as a call option price the payoff when the stock price goes up minus the payoff when the stock price goes down divided by the up moment of the stock price minus the down moment of the stock price for each node i can compute this kind of a delta so in our example it will come out as 10 minus 0 divided by 60 minus 41.66 so this number comes out as the delta and how i would use this delta is let's say if i have 100 100 call options right let's say i have around 100 call options or let's say i have 100 shares instead of 100 call options let's work it out the other way let's say i have uh, 100 shares right for this 100 shares using this uh, delta what i would like to get in is the number of call options that i have to get into is the share price divided by 
the delta. So, because what that does mean is for every 1 rupee change or for every 1 dollar change in the price of the share, the call option position will change by 0.54. So, the number of call options that I really need to purchase or really need to get into is around 183. Using this delta, we will decide what would be the stock to the call options kind of a ratio or call options to stocks kind of a ratio. And because the share and the call option prices move in the same direction, when I have a long position in the share, I will try to go for a short position in the call option and vice versa. So, let us say I have bought 100 shares and sold 183 call options. Or if at all I have my market price of the call option lesser, I will buy 183 call option. So, probably today I will create a transaction like this. I will buy the arbitrage opportunity that I am creating is something like this. Buy 183.33 call options at 4. How much is that going to cost you? Because it's a buy, it's a it's a cash outflow for you. So these many call options, probably we can round that off. These many call options at the price of four. So that is the transaction which we have done today. And we are also talking about sell hundred shares today. So when I am selling hundred shares, I am going to get. 100 times 50. So, I have shorted it. So, I am going to get around 5000. So, the net cash flow today, the net cash flow today for me is the summation of these two. So, I am having a net cash flow of 42.6, uh, 4266. Now, let me assume the after 6 month period, after 6 months, okay, assume that the stock price touches either 60 or this. So, if it touches 60, if it touches 60, what is our position? Because we have sold 100 shares, we have to buy them back. So, buy 100 shares. So, when I am buying back my 100 shares, the 100, I have to buy it at 60. So, logically, I am spending 6000 on that day. To buy it back, I am actually uh, spending uh, 6000. And similarly, because uh, I have bought call, 183 calls, I can, uh, my payoff is on each of the 183 calls, I have a payoff of 10. So, calls, the settlement is there is a benefit 183 times 10. So, here there is an outflow of 6000. Whereas, when because of the calls, I have an inflow of 1833. So, my total uh, cash flow there is on that day, I have to actually spend only 4166. So, today I have spent 4266, but on that day I need to spend only 4166. Means I have got a benefit. What is that benefit? We will we'll look at it. Similarly, assume that the stock price is around 41.66. In that case also, if we see, buy 100 shares. What is happening when I am buying uh, 100 shares? The cash flow for me is 100 times whatever is this stock price. This is the cash flow. And in a call, because it is expired, my cash flow is 0 in case of the call. Which means even if the, the overall cash flow in this case also for me is the same 4166. So, what is happening is Today, I am able to generate 4266 
whereas I need to pay only 4166 after 6 months which means the cost of funds for me 100 is the gain in both the cases so the cost of funds for me for the 6 monthly period is around 2.34 percent for the 6 month it is 2.34 even when I am annualizing it this is around 4.68 percent whereas the risk free rate is 6 percent which means I am able to generate much at a much lesser cost compared to my because the same way I am able to generate the funds at a much lesser cost I am able to generate the funds today at a much lesser cost which is uh, like an arbitrary any any profit that I am getting which is uh, or any cost which is less than the risk free cost is a benefit itself or assume the other way <coughs> if the price of call option is 7 what I will simply do I will sell I will sell 183 calls in this transaction because the prices of the call is greater than that of the, the no arbitrage price I will sell 183 calls today so when I am selling 183 calls today I am getting a cash flow of 550 selling oh sorry selling 183 calls at 7 bucks I am getting a cash flow of 1283 and I will buy 100 shares so buying 100 shares will lead to a cash outflow of 5000 so today I am spending I am spending in a net around 3760 but what about uh, after 6 months if the stock price goes to 60 now that I have bought the uh, bought the shares I will sell the shares at 60 so I will sell 100 uh, so I will get 6000 on that day and uh, because I have sold the call option the party who has bought the call will get will exercise the call so that party will get a payoff of uh, 10 a profit of 10 means I will end up with a loss of 10 so 183.33 times 10 so my loss is going to be 1833 which means my net cash flows in this process are going to be around 4166 so 3716 by investing 3716 today I am able to generate 4166 after 6 months so just when I am looking at uh, the advantage side the difference between the two divided by 3716.67 <coughs> is generating almost 12% uh, profit right 3716 has become 4166 even if the stock price goes to 0 the same logic no sorry stock price goes to 41 it's going to be the same because I have bought the shares now I will sell the shares I'll when I'm selling the shares I'll get only 41.6 so when I'm selling the shares I'm going to get 100 times 41.67 so I'm going to get this much of cash flow Whereas uh, from a call perspective the payoff is, is zero because the person who has bought the call option will not exercise it. So finally I am going to get 41.67 or 4167 by investing 3716 today. So I am going to get a much better return in this process which is much higher than the risk free rate of return. So which means anywhere if I see that the price is different from the no arbitrage price which we are getting from uh, uh, the, the valuation process I can very well structure my transaction effectively by using delta and use it uh, to generate profits so that is what uh, we we look at uh, when we are talking about a binomial uh, tree model 
here we talked about it as a one one period tree the same logic i can extend it to a two period tree model so if i have to look out for the same example with a two period tree i will take uh, all these things to be the same but probably instead of uh, a six month up movement i will take it as a three monthly up movement so that uh, the six monthly option means nothing but two periods and instead of 1.2 i'll take the up movement as 1.1 so what I can look at here, okay, right now the price is 50. So this multiplied by up, right? And I should know the down moment also here, which is nothing but one by the up moment, right? So this is 0.9. So from here, the stock price can even touch 0.9 after uh, three months, 45.45. And after uh, three more months, I'll put another 1.1 uh, jump from here. So taking it to 60.5, another uh, downfall from here, taking it uh, back to 50, and another downfall from here, taking it to 41.32. Now the same logic again. If at all, okay, now I need to know the probability of up and down. What is the probability of up now? 1 plus R. Here the R is a 3 monthly R. Because U and D we are taking as quarterly. So what I will say is this divided by 4. That is my R minus D divided by U minus D. This is what is the probability of up. And probability of down is 1 minus the probability of up. So this is the case. That's one thing. Then we are trying to find out the payoffs of each of the case. If the stock price touches 60.5, the payoff is going to be 60.5 minus 50, which is 10.5. If the stock price touches uh, 50, there is no payoff, so 0. And if the stock price touches uh, 41.32, even then the payoff does not uh, exist for a call option, right? We'll also look at for a put option also, but for a call option, these are the payoffs. So based on this, I can find out the expected payoffs here. What is the expected payoff for this combination? There is a 55% chance of going up, means 55% chance of generating a 10.5 and 45% chance of generating a 0. So the expected payoff is 5.825. Here also there is a 55% chance of generating a 0. Of course here it's 0 only and 44% chance of generating a another 0. So the expected payoff here is going to be 0. Now I will uh, look at one period before. Okay, here the expected payoff is 5.825. But I wanted one period before means I am discounting it by three months. So this divided by 1 plus R to the power 0.25. So, so this also 1 plus R, this divided by 1 plus R to the power 0.25 so again so there is a 55 percent chance of getting this payoff 45 percent chance of getting this payoff again i can find out uh, the average or expected payoff here so this times this plus this times this so this is the expected payoff again i am trying to find out the present value of this expected payoff 1 plus r to the power 0.25. So this value of 3.14 is an indicator of the premium or uh, the appropriate price for the call option 
based on a two period binomial tree this is what we call as uh, the two period uh, binomial tree because we have uh, we we have reached the expiry expiration date of the option in two steps we have broken the total uh, period of the expiration into two two halves and we have tried modeling uh, <coughs> the stock price tree for each of the periods and based on that generated the price of the call option the same logic holds true even in case of a put option the stock tree everything remain the same only this part will differ okay if the stock price touches 60.5 the payoff is going to be zero if the stock price touches 50 for a 50 uh, strike price the payoff is still zero but here if the stock price touches 41.32 there is going to be a payoff of x minus there is going to be a payoff of x minus s so it is going to be 8.67 and after that the expected payoff all remain the same the expected payoff is 3.86 do it to the one period before you will get 3.80 similarly here because both are zeros the expected value is also zero discounted by one period you will get it as zero so there is a 55.4 percent chance of a zero and 44.5 percent chance of uh, 3.8 so expected payoff is going to be 1.69 discounted by three more months to bring the value of the put option as of the current price so based on this logic we can very well establish that the value of the put option here is going to be 1.67 this is the no arbitrage price value of the put option assuming uh, assuming all these uh, conditions assuming the binomial tree model and assuming a three months jump factor to be around 1.1 on the upward side so given this uh, data we can very well say that this is the appropriate price and if at all the price is not appropriate as i suggested we can use the delta factor based on the delta we can uh, very well go for a long or a short only thing is if we are using calls the position should be opposite positions means if i am long on stock i have to go short on calls or vice versa whereas when i am talking of puts the position should be the same if i am long on calls a long on uh, stock I have to be long on put I am short on stock I have to be short on put also for creating better arbitrage opportunities so that is uh, that's how we find out the price of the European uh, call as well as put options uh, on the stock and if at all the arbitrage opportunities or if at all the pricing is not proper we can very well create the arbitrage opportunities on the same right now the next thing which we can focus on is the interest rates i mean till now whatever uh, we have worked on is with respect to the stock prices either by creating a one period tree or a two period tree finding out the value of the call option on the stock now we can also apply the same concept to value the call option on a bond or even interest rate uh, securities interest rate uh, caps or uh, interest rate floors any interest rate uh, kind of securities also we can value using uh, the binomial tree model but we will uh, look at this example of a bond option how do we uh, evaluate the price of uh, uh, an option on a bond like a callable bond where there is a call option present on the bond how do i get into the valuation aspect of that for that what we actually require is an interest rate tree the interest rate trees are generated using various mechanisms 
right now let's not focus on how do we generate the interest rate tree but typically once the interest rate tree is given again that is also a binomial tree means currently what is the interest rate after one period what are the possible interest rates after two periods what are the possible interest rates like this we create an interest rate tree right the one period rate today one period rate one period from now one period rate <coughs> two periods from now if these are uh, the kind of interest rate uh, possibilities and here we directly assume that there is a 50 percent chance of up as well as down movement if these are the possible uh, interest rates that are getting uh, generated then how do i value a bond that is what is the typical essence of a bond va uh, uh, option valuation on a bond so let's look at this example to generate the clarity all all else will remain the same for us okay if the current one one period interest rate seven percent okay i will take it uh, here Okay, I will create uh, an interest rate tree, current it is 7% and one period from now 7.8 or 7.2, okay, so it can go to 7.8 or 7.2 and from there 8.1, 7.85 and uh, 7.2. All right find the price of a two period European interest rate call option on the one period uh, rate with sorry uh, find the price of a two period uh, interest rate uh, call option with a one period strike rate of 7.25 percent so the strike price strike rate for us is around 7.25 percent okay so if at all i have to value the bond whose principal value is hundred thousand right okay means and this bond okay let's assume that this is a, a three-year bond let's assume that this is a, a three-year maturity bond so when I am taking it as a three year maturity bond, in the third year, it's going to give me 100,000. Whatever may be the interest rate as on the second year, it's going to give me 100,000 in the third year. At the end of the third year, it's going to pay me 100,000. Now, what we are trying to see is, If, if I am looking at either that as a bond or probably when I am talking about a simple interest rate option. The interest rate option of 7.25% strike rate means if the strike rate is more than 7.25, if the market rate is more than the strike rate, there is a benefit. So when the market rate touches 8.1 what is the benefit here or what is the payoff here the payoff as on this date is nothing but 100,000 into whatever is the difference between the two 8.1 minus 7.25 percent this is going to be the payoff the same way here the payoff is going to be 100,000 into 7.85 minus 7.25 percent so this is going to be the payoff here whereas here the payoff is going to be zero for the simple reason the the strike rate is 7.25 percent whereas uh, the the actual market rate is 7.2 percent so the payoff is going to be zero 
Now the same logic I can find out the expected payoff the expected payoff because in this case we will always take 50% up and 50% down. So there is a 50% chance of going up plus a 50% chance of going down. So overall okay uh, this is going to be the expected profit expected payoff here also i can talk of the same 50 percent chance of up plus 50 percent chance of down so the overall payoff is going to be this much now this 7.725 i will discount it by 7.8 percent right uh, if i'm assuming all these are years the 7.25 uh, 725 I will discount it by 7.8 percent because once the interest rate has touched this only then these possibilities are uh, are available so this 725 I will I will discount it with 7.8 percent so probably I will put it as 1 plus 7.8 percent so this is going to be the exp uh, present value of the expected payoff Whereas from this case, I will discount it by 7.2%. So this is going to be the expected payoff. Again the same. There is a 50% chance for this and 50% chance for this. So I can uh, very well uh, get to my expected value again. What is uh, the expected uh, value here? There is a 0.5 chance. So there is a 0.5% uh, chance. Uh, probability of getting 672 and there is a 0.5 probability of getting 279 as the payoff. So this is the expected payoff and uh, <coughs> again discounting it by one more period this time I will do it by 7% so which will take it to 1 plus 7 percent giving it 445. So for this particular interest rate security which actually is freezing the strike rate at 7.25 percent the cost of this uh, call option or the premium of this call option is going to be 445 bucks so anything we are uh, talking of any option on any security or any bond we will work it out exactly in the same manner to arrive at the price of the call option using the binomial tree models. So we will uh, first make either a stock price tree or the interest rate tree and uh, based on that we will uh, evaluate what is going to be the payoff on uh, the expiration date either for the stock or for the uh, or for the interest rate uh, securities we will uh, evaluate what is the payoff on that particular date and uh, uh, if it is the stock we find out the probabilities of up and down movements whereas when it is uh, with respect to the interest rates we generally assume uh, a 50 percent chance of going up and going down find the expected values discount them back by one period again find the expected uh, values again discount them back until we reach the current period and whatever the number that comes out that would be equivalent to the no arbitrage price associated with that particular call option a little bit of uh, more practice will definitely uh, give more and more insight into this uh, concept right so this is uh, something associated uh, with the binomial tree model now we will uh, slowly uh, move towards uh, the next set of model which is uh, a black scholes model and try to understand a little bit of more calculations related thing with the black scholes model all right and we will also uh, take up one real world uh, example to understand how this binomial tree as well as the black scholes models are computed in the real world all right let's get on to the black scholes model to get an understanding into it yeah now let's uh, go ahead with uh, the other model which is uh, the black scholes model 
for valuing the options and uh, the black scholes model probably i call it as a continuous version of the binomial tree model what is meant by uh, the continuous version in the binomial tree model we have taken discrete time periods okay after 3 months the prices can be something like this and another 3 uh, months later the prices can be something like this so we were talking about the prices only after 3 months so we are more focusing on the prices at discrete time periods whereas uh, if the size of this time period becomes narrow and narrow instead of 3 months probably i go for 3 hours or probably one day it may so happen that for the 6 months i may have to create some 180 uh, period uh, binomial tree because each period is one day to, to model uh, a 6 month or to find the value of a 6 monthly option we may have to create a 180 period binomial tree and that is where we it becomes a big limitation or becomes a, a big difficulty for us to accommodate that particular aspect so what the black scholes has done is assuming that the intervals are pretty minute and which way wherein this boils down to a continuous kind of a time period they have come out with a formula they have come out with a formula to find out the price of the call option the formula goes like this the price of a call option is the current spot price they are assuming that it uh, there it follows one normal distribution d1 current spot price into nd1 minus x by 1 plus r to the power t which is present value of the strike price into nd2 so basically what is this what are the inputs that are required i require s which is the current spot price i require x which is the strike price i require r the risk-free rate of return i require t time to maturity and uh, they are assumed to follow a couple of uh, normal distributions we'll talk about what are those d1 and d2 for d1 their formula has come out with a mechanism saying log s by x plus r plus sigma squared by 2 into t divided by sigma root t this is the formula they have come up for uh, d1 and d2 goes as d1 minus sigma root t so using these uh, d1 and d2 trying to find out uh, the probabilities uh, <coughs> corresponding to the d1 and d2 assuming that they are following a normal distribution we can arrive at the price of the call option that is what is the mechanism of the black scholes model it's a straight forward formula you don't need to build a 100 period tree or a 50 period tree or nothing like that you just need the same and probably here you also require a sigma which is nothing but the volatility of the underlying security with these four five elements we can very well use the formula to find out the price of a european call option or a put option so just uh, taking these things given for our binomial lottery example where almost all the details are available except for uh, volatility these four values are the same whether we are uh, dealing with uh, a binomial tree or a black scholes model so let me take uh, these four to be the same and probably as a sigma the volatility annually let me take it somewhere around 25% some some kind of volatility of the underlying security now based on this what we can find out the price of the call option goes with this kind of a formula 
so what i'll do first i'll find out d1 using the same formula log s by x plus r plus sigma squared by 2 into t by sigma root t okay log s by x plus r plus here everything should be annual sigma squared by 2 into t divided by this entire thing divided by sigma root t <coughs> sigma into square root of t so this is giving me the formula the value for d1 and d2 comes out as d1 minus sigma square root of t so these are the values of d1 and d2 we have and when we are saying i'll take nd1 assuming that this d1 follows a normal distribution corresponding to 0.25 right if if i am assuming that d1 is following a standard normal distribution with a mean 0 when we are talking about 0.25 what is the probability corresponding to this means this is the area corresponding to this so that is what is given by nd1 from our tables so i will uh, take it as norm distribution 0.25 and this gives me that it is around uh, 0.6 the same logic when i put to nd2 even uh, d2 is positive so nd2 should be greater than 50 percent itself so i'll uh, take it as norms dist of d2 giving me okay d2 giving me this is 0.53 using this i can find out the price of my european call option as the spot price into nd1 minus the present value of the strike price x by 1 plus r to the power t this is the strike price present value of the strike price into nd2 so the price of the call option is coming out as somewhere around 4.23 again i can find out the price of the put option in this case by going with the call put parity relationship itself or kind of a synthetic put itself c plus x by e per x by 1 plus r to the power t minus s that is what will be the price of equivalent put option c plus x by 1 plus r to the power t minus s that is what as per the call put parity relationship for this kind of uh, scenario the price of the put option should be around 2.8 so but to <coughs> use this formula there are some assumptions which will lead to some limitations and we have to be very much uh, comfortable in terms of understanding all those things so some of the assumptions are this works only for european options i cannot uh, look at uh, the american uh, options only uh, if at all uh, an american option need to be uh, looked at then only the binomial pre models are more appropriate for valuing american option because the at each node you can think of exercising the option whereas in case of european we have only one time period so there is uh, no way we can uh, exercise the option intermediately so it is not applicable to american option this formula though the formula is easy to use there are some limitations associated with it it also makes an assumption that the underlying stock prices 
follow a log normal distribution when the prices follow a log normal distribution the logarithm of their uh, prices which is nothing but the returns they are assumed to follow a normal distribution so when you see that any uh, particular uh, stock returns don't follow a log uh, normal distribution or when the stock prices don't follow a log normal kind of a distribution then probably uh, we can very well uh, we can we cannot uh, use the black scholes model effectively and if we see in the formula there is only one r means it is assuming that that risk free rate of return is constant that's a big drawback right we are talking about an option which is expiring in 6 months and within that 6 months i cannot expect for the entire 6 months the risk free rate of return r will be constant it will be very uh, difficult to make that kind of an assumption and uh, more primarily i cannot use this model to price those securities whose r values are differing during this period any security where r is quite drastically uh, different you cannot value those kind of securities which means all the interest rate based securities it could be bond valuation callable bonds or options on bonds or it could be interest rate related uh, options none of them can be valued using the black scholes model only those particular uh, uh, options like options on stocks are probably options on exchange rates those are some of the ones which can be uh, modeled very well through the black scholes formula but not anything that is dependent on the interest rates so i have to be careful with that then one more assumption with respect to black scholes is it assumes that the volatility of the underlying asset is constant even that is a big problem if i am talking about any asset for 6 months assuming that it does not uh, fluctuate at all is a very away from reality kind of an assumption so uh, wherever uh, for shorter periods i can very well assume that the volatility is constant which means when i am valuing one month options or two months options probably that assumption that the volatility is constant is very well applicable or is very well uh, uh, justified but when i am talking about uh, for a longer term options keeping the volatility of the underlying asset constant is very difficult and we are also assuming that the markets are frictionless means uh, there are no taxes and uh, transaction costs and uh, probably uh, unlimited uh, short sales or no restrictions right all these things will work out in a kind of a frictionless markets but in reality they they, they don't occur like that right we have uh, in some cases the taxes and the transaction costs could be more and more higher which means the black scholes model will become more and more limited uh, usage in that particular scenarios and uh, the underlying assets the options are the european itself this works only and it also assumes that in the underlying asset no cash flows underlying asset there are no cash flows like no dividends or intermediately nothing of that sort is declared but of course even if they are declared we can very well reduce the spot price by the extent of dividend declared and we can go ahead using the model but that's again an uh, approximation of the model but uh, in reality the the model assumes that there are no discount uh, there are no uh, intermediate uh, cash flows during the period of the option so whatever the formula we have used for the valuation purpose whatever the formula we have uh, arrived at or whatever uh, the price of the call option and the price of the put option we have arrived at we have to be uh, understanding that these are the limitations that are existing with that particular formula all right now the next thing which we should look at is the options 
and uh, there are underlying factors right okay what if the stock price changes so okay in this case what i would like to look at is i will take different prices of the stock price right right let's say uh, i will uh, look at right from uh, 41 41 42 and probably i'll take it up to 60 just to demonstrate okay if the stock price goes to any of these numbers what will happen to the call option premium okay what is my call option uh, premium here i'll take this particular number here and probably uh, for the put option premium i'll take this particular number and now what i can very well uh, do is these are i can very well uh, generate a what if analysis table mentioning that my input is the spot price and what i typically uh, see is this is how the price of a call option as well as put option are varying with respect to <coughs> the change in the spot price so if we see if the spot price is changing how the call option premium as well as the put option premium are changing let me plot a small graph for you to understand if i am plotting a small graph on seeing how the call option premium and the put option premium are changing with respect to the spot price what you could very well see is as the spot price is increasing the call option premium is increasing whereas as the spot price is decreasing the call option premium is decreasing and the same way when you are looking at put it is behaving the reverse as the spot price is increasing the put option premium is coming down and vice versa so this change in the option price the change in the option price with respect to the change in the underlying securities price is what we call as delta and as we are seeing for a call option delta is positively related with the price whereas for a put option delta is negatively related with the price so this is uh, one important thing that we have to be uh, comfortable with in terms of uh, understanding the call option and the behavior uh, 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 call and put options and its relationship with the change in the underlying uh, assets price whereas now what i would do is okay let me do one more thing now now the same thing i will do with respect to the volatility now right now the volatility is 25 percent right so i will take right from 20 percent up to 30 percent let me consider the various scenarios let's see how the price of the call option is going to vary and price of the put option is going to vary under each of these scenarios all right so here when i am doing the same thing here when i am trying to do the same thing replacing the volatility what i could uh, see is this is how the price of the call and the put are varying now again if i take these things in a graphical form what i could observe is in both the cases in both the cases you are seeing that as the volatility is increasing the premium is increasing so even in case of call as well as in case of put what i am observing is as the volatility is increasing the premium is increasing as the volatility is uh, increasing what i am seeing is uh, 
the call option uh, premium uh, as well as the put option premium both of them are increasing that's one more thing uh, that you have to be uh, comfortable with so that is what i have replicated here in case of vega vega is nothing but the change in the option premium with respect to change in volatility if the volatility of the security uh, changes what will be the impact on the premium of the call option as well as on the put option and what we are seeing is in both the cases it will be positive itself which means as the price as the volatility is increasing the call option premium as well as put option premium both of them have to increase only then the next thing we will look at is we will change the risk free rate of return okay now uh, it was given as uh, 6% but all i would like to look at is right from 4% with a 0.25% uh, increase probably i'll uh, look at it until 8 8.25% whatever it is so let me consider the price of the call option as well as the price of the put option the same logic when i am extending what i could see is keeping uh, uh, everything else uh, constant all i am seeing is in case of call option if the uh, risk free rate is increasing the call option premium is increasing but very minutely whereas in case of put option it is decreasing but again very minutely so the call option premium as well as uh, so the call option premium is increasing very minutely and the put option premium is decreasing very minutely and that is what uh, we represented as rho the change in the call option premium for a change in the risk free rate of return or the sensitivity of the option with respect to the risk free rate that is what we call as rho and as a graphical representation it is looking like it will be slightly increasing with the interest rates for a call option whereas it would be slightly decreasing with the interest rates for a put option this is one more thing uh, that we are uh, looking at this is one more thing that we are uh, looking at as the relationship so that is where i mention the rho is nothing but uh, it's the sensitivity of the option premium with respect to the risk free rate of return it is generally positively related with uh, the call option for the call option it is positively related with uh, the increase in the risk free rate whereas it is negatively related with the increase in the risk free rate for a put option then the next thing we are looking at is changing the theta or changing the time to expiration okay here uh, right now we are taking 0.5 in this example but probably if i consider uh, 0.2 0.3 kind of months 0.5 and probably one one month one uh, year something like this and i look at the price of the call option as well as the price of the put option a change in the underlying right i want to change i want to change the time to expiration and what i could uh, see is as the time to expiration is increasing as the time to expiration is increasing we see that the price of the call option is increasing and the price to of the put option is also increasing so the more and the more closer to maturity we are coming the more and more closer to maturity we are coming the price of the call option decreases as well as the price of the put option also decreases and uh, this is what we call as the time decay with respect to the put put option we talk about uh, with with respect to uh, the theta we talk about the time decay means the more and more time is uh, expiring 
or the more and more uh, uh, we are approaching close to the maturity period we see that the price of call as well as put option both of them will actually come down so which means actually a theta will have a negative relationship theta will be lesser than zero itself because the more closer i am coming to maturity i am seeing that the, the call option price actually will come down so the, that is what uh, is the uh, importance of uh, theta which is uh, showing the sensitivity with respect to uh, time to maturity the more we are approaching the maturity period we see that the price of the call option will actually come down the same logic i can exercise it with respect to the exercise price right right now the exercise price is uh, uh, so in this itself let's say if i am looking at uh, not taking this as the stock price but i take this as an exercise price so what will happen in this entire uh, setup instead of uh, considering it as a stock price i'll consider this as an exercise price now what i could uh, see is if the exercise price is 41 the call option price is 10 and what you are seeing is uh, as the exercise price is increasing the call option premium is coming down drastically whereas the put option premium is going up drastically so for lambda which is the sensitivity of the call option premium with respect to the exercise price we are seeing that it is negatively related in case of a call option whereas it is positively related in case of put option so we need to be comfortable with what <coughs> are the various uh, factors and uh, that impact the price of an option and in what direction are they going to impact the price of the option the only thing is uh, probably uh, uh, volatility vega is the factor that increases both for call as well as the put even the time decay is something that behaves in the same way both for a call and the put whereas all the others data de uh, delta rho and lambda they behave oppositely for call as well as put all right now we have already uh, talked about uh, delta to some extent but typically i need to know how do i use this delta for the hedging purpose as the definition itself is saying it's a change in the price of the call option change in price of the call option for a change in price of the stock so uh, whatever it is uh, if the if the stock price has increased by 1 rupee what is the change in the price of the corresponding call option so we are talking about uh, c1 minus c0 whatever is the change in uh, the call option premium divided by s1 minus s0 which is the change in the underlying security price remember this is not percentage change this is a dollar change it is in absolute uh, <coughs> monetary term not in terms of percentage that is how we compute the delta of the option so in this case at this moment if i want yeah if the stock price okay let me again uh, take these things uh, back with respect to the delta itself <coughs> so now if the stock price changes to i'll take it somewhere around 55 okay right now when the stock price is 50 the call option premium is 4.24 now when the stock price has touched 55 the call option premium became 7.73 so in this case if i have to take delta 
it is nothing but change in the call option premium which is uh, around 3.49 divided by change in stock price so the delta for me is almost close to 0.7 right the delta is 0.7 what does that mean for one dollar change in the underlying stock the call option premium will change by 0.7 dollars for one dollar change in the underlying uh, uh, security uh, the call option premium will change by 0.7 now the other way to understand that also is we will uh, even find the delta from the black scholes formula as n of d1 so when i look at n of d1 yeah it's somewhere around 0.6 right probably uh, we should take very minute instead of 50 to 50 we'll look at if i look at 50 to 51 instead of 55 55 was looking like slightly a major change so if i look at 50 to 51 4.85 minus 4.24 right if i look at 4.85 it is coming out to 0.61 by 1. So 0.61 which is approximately equal to N of D1 because N of D1 also is somewhere around 0 0.60. So directly <coughs> there are two ways of uh, finding out the price, uh, the value of delta. Either if I have the Black-Scholes formula, N D1 is nothing but the delta for a call and for a put it is nd1 minus 1 nd1 minus 1 will be the delta for a put option which means we can very well make out that the put option delta is negative whereas the call option delta is always positive and for a long position in the stock we see that the delta is always 1 and for a short position in the stock, the delta is always minus 1. And what we are uh, seeing is, as the stock price is increase, increasing, right? as we have seen with respect to 55, as the stock price is increasing, the delta keeps increasing, it will touch up to 1, whereas for a put, the delta keeps decreasing. Here if we see the delta from 50 to 51, 2.8 to 2.42 almost 0.38 minus 0.38 is the delta which can come from this formula also so this is a uh, one way we compute the delta of the call as well as put option either i can use it directly from either i can use it uh, directly from uh, uh, the black scholes uh, formula or whatever is the mechanism I am using, change in the call option premium divided by the change in the underlying stock price. Now, how do you look at this particular delta? When the call option is completely out of money, look at the delta then. What, when do I say that the call option is completely out of money? Probably I take uh, this to be 60. I take uh, the strike price, let's say to be around 60. These are the typical uh, premiums. Now you see the change or probably even more deeper I will take 75. So if this is even more deeper, deep out of money uh, call option now you see the delta is almost zero for one dollar change in the underlying the call option premium has changed only by around 0 0.02 which means the delta is purely around 0 0.02 so the more and the more the option is becoming out of money you will find 
that the delta will be closer to zero whereas the more and the more the option becomes in the money we will find that the delta will be close to one you see 20.86 21.86 almost close to one so what we would uh, very well see is the more the option is in the money the delta will become uh, one the more the option is going out of money the delta will become close to zero the same logic will go for a case of a put option the more uh, in this case the put option is also the put option is out of money so when the put option is out of money we will see that the delta is close to zero when the put option is in the money we will see that the delta is very close to one so any in any kind of an option the more it is out of money we see that its uh, delta is uh, close to zero the more it is in the money it it may be either plus one in case of call option or it could be minus one in case of put option so this is how we should uh, look at uh, evaluation of uh, delta for various uh, uh, various uh, positions now the next thing for me that is very important is how do i use this knowledge of delta for hedging purpose the simple logic is for any stocks for any position in stocks as i said if you are long on stock the delta is plus 1 if you are short on stock the delta is minus 1 so when you are trying to create a portfolio in such a way that the net delta is zero the net delta of the portfolio is zero we call that kind of a hedging as the delta neutral hedging simple way okay let's assume that i am use i already have some x number of shares so if i am having x number of shares uh, and i am on a long position because i am having the shares so my delta is x into 1 now i am assuming that i will uh, buy or sell whatever it is some some y number of options and uh, let's say the delta of the option is delta so i should create an option in such a way i should create the portfolio in such a way that the sum of their that the net delta or the uh, or the final delta of the position is equal to zero from this standpoint what is that i am getting y into delta equal to minus x and y is coming out as minus x by delta minus itself is opposite position so if you are long on the original you go for short on the option and the number of options you have to short is minus x by delta x is the number of shares divided by delta of the option so if we have 100 shares and delta is 0.5 then for every 100 shares i should short 200 uh, call options that is how we work out on creating a delta neutral hedging strategy whatever may be the number of uh, uh, st underlying stocks i have i can take the opposite uh, position i can find out uh, the number of shares divided by the delta whatever the number comes up i can take either uh, uh, a short position in case i am using call options or the same position which is the long position in case i am using the put option now in this process what is going to happen is okay let's assume here right now the strike price is 50 only in this case i am seeing that the delta is 4.23 and uh, 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 the delta is 4.23 4.85 so what is going to be the delta in this case the delta in this case is this much is the delta 
0.62 is the delta here right now <coughs> so assuming that right now the delta is around 0.62 we have created a position okay let's say i already have uh, 100 shares with me i already have uh, 100 shares with me then in my position i am creating 100 divided so 160.91 call options is what i have shorted but what is happening is with the stock price changing the delta is also changing let's say the stock price now has gone to 52 and because of that 52 i am seeing that the delta also has gone up the delta also has gone up to 0.66 directly i am seeing a jump in the delta to 0.66 which means i need to short only 150 uh, call options which means earlier i have shorted 160 i can very well close 10 of those positions i can offset 10 of those positions so changing the positions offsetting the positions on a regular basis with the change in delta is what i call as the dynamic hedging so we are either increasing the number of uh, option positions or decreasing the number of option positions based on how the delta is changing over time so the, that is uh, in some cases i may have to go for more options in some cases i may close down the existing option positions on a dynamic uh, basis and that's the reason we call it as a dynamic hedging all right so this we have already looked at now we can uh, look at the scenario of yeah one more interesting uh, aspect called gamma see what we will uh, see is we will uh, look at the change in the stock price so in this case as the stock price is increasing okay for this uh, position itself see these are the various uh, uh, for for the stock price these are uh, For, for uh, different instances of the stock price these are the prices of uh, the call option now the deltas of each of these things i can very well find out okay the delta is nothing but the difference at each of the layers now the delta itself is keeping on changing so let me take it uh, between uh, 50 and 51 between 50 and 51 i'll try to find out the delta which is right now at 0 0.62 0 0.62 is the delta now what i'll observe is if the stock price is changing right i will uh, take it uh, right from right from uh, uh, 41 right from 41 what I will do is if the stock price is changing what will happen to that delta between 50 and 51 right if the stock price is changing what will happen to the delta between 50 and 51 in case of call as well as in case of put so in case of put it is coming out as this minus this so these are the numbers in case of uh, call and put and what 
I am looking at is the change in delta how the delta is varying with the underlying stock price is changing if the underlying stock price is changing if the underlying stock price is changing okay uh, here the delta across okay i have to change both of them in fact okay if uh, if the stock price okay let me uh, see like this if the stock price is currently 50 we can't uh, do it this way if the stock price is uh, currently 50 i am seeing that the delta we, we will uh, look at it like this if the stock price is currently 50 the delta is 0.25 where nd1 0 0.60 so we'll uh, look at it like this i'll see how the delta is changing with respect to the stock price so what i can uh, very well see is so let's say i have a uh, 42, 44, 60. I am interested in uh, finding out the delta of the call. How this delta of the call is changing with respect to the stock price. So what you could uh, see is as the stock price is increasing the delta is also increasing but you see the rate of change of delta the rate of change of delta here okay around 37 percent 29 22 what you are seeing is the delta is falling down the, the change in the delta is falling down and it is closing as it is close getting closer and closer to the in the money but what we could also see is when we are uh, looking at the rate of change of delta the rate of change of delta how the delta is changing with the stock price if the stock price is increasing by 1 rupee how the delta is changing from so right now let's say if the if in this case the delta is 0 0.60 now when the stock price has increased to 51 the delta has become 0.64 initially it was 0.60 now it has become 0.64 and now when the stock price goes to 52 the delta has become 0.68 right and when the stock price goes to 53 the delta has become 0.72 now what we are trying to drive is as the stock price is going away from 50, 52, 53, 54, we are seeing that the delta is uh, increasing but at a decreasing rate. Similarly, I can look at it the other side also. If the stock price is 49, the delta is 0.55. Even that change right instead of looking at uh, the dollar difference uh, sorry instead of looking at uh, the percentage difference i may look out uh, for an absolute difference if i look at this absolute difference here okay 0 0.08 you see here close to this 50 mark the differences are much higher but the more you are moving away from the 50 mark the differences are coming down 
and even the more you are moving away from the 50 mark on the upward side also the differences are going down this is an indicator that the gamma typically will follow this kind of a shape with respect to the option price as the stock price is increasing the gamma will have a maximum probably uh, the logic the better way to put the diagram is something like this because we talk about the change in the negative way but whatever even if i take uh, the positive side what i see is the gamma will be maximum when the option is at the money and the more the option is moving away from at the money to more deep in the money or deep out of the money we look at the sensitivity of the delta delta changes quite drastically around that 50 mark right around that 50 mark the change in delta is more higher compared to the change in delta anywhere else so probably even in this example we should we should look at we have computed the deltas anyhow right for this uh, particular example we have computed the delta so let me take uh, 50 only we have computed the deltas here find out the change in the deltas across not the percentage change in delta okay point 0.2 you see here point 0.2 point 0.2 point, point, point so the change in delta whatever we are getting if the stock price is increasing the change in the delta <coughs> even at a later point uh, when we see if i change the stock price here and i observe the deltas right here i cannot uh, do this uh, job if i change the stock prices and i observe the delta i should not observe the call option price so these are the deltas so i should uh, look out for change in delta now okay let me i am not looking at the delta these are the deltas now when i look at the change in the delta these are the changes in the delta point right from point 0 0.04 okay it has uh, come to 0 0.46 0 0.47 kind of numbers and again it has fallen to 0 0.0 0 0.0 so what you could see is the delta has increased to a certain level <coughs> the delta has increased to a certain level and after that it has even fallen so right from this level you are seeing that the delta got increased increased and this is where it has got decreased so somewhere close to uh, at the money the delta is much higher but the more and more the option is going out of money or deep in the money the, del the, 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 the change in the delta is going more and more lesser which means the gamma is becoming much and much lesser so that's uh, one more thing we have to be uh, comfortable with so if the delta is very very fluctuating then the delta hedging may not be a good mechanism at all because the delta is changing on quite drastically so a, a delta hedging may not be effective but if the gamma is much lesser which means the option is either deep in the money or deep out of money what we could uh, clearly understand is the delta hedge alone may be sufficient because the gamma impact may not be that great so that is where i am saying that gamma is very highest when the asset is at the money okay now moving on to the next what would be the impact of the cash flows like dividends if at all any dividend is declared what would be the impact on the price of the option so large same logic instead of s you adjust the s by subtracting the present value of the dividends you adjust the s and then you apply the black scholes formula which means s is coming down so if at all there are some expected dividends the, the spot price is adjusted towards the downward side so when the stock price decreases obviously the call option price should decrease and the put option price should increase so this is uh, the typical uh, relationship that can exist with respect to 
<coughs> any intermediate cash flows present on the security then one more thing uh, which is uh, worth knowing for us is volatility in the black scholes formula we have actually given we have actually uh, submitted one value for sigma we have uh, of course in this case we have taken that sigma is uh, 25% but how do i determine this sigma there are two methods to determine that sigma one is the historical volatility method and the other one is the implied volatility method in the historical volatility what i will be doing is let's say i have taken the stock prices for the last one year i will compute the daily con the continuously compounded returns which is nothing but log s1 by s0 using that i will compute the continuously compounded returns and for those continuously compounded returns i will take the standard deviation of them and that is what i call as the historical volatility of the underlying asset so that particular historical volatility is what i can substitute as a sigma and then compute the price of the call option as well as the put option that is the mechanism of the historical volatility approach so whatever uh, is the uh, standard deviation that is coming from that uh, process is called as a historical volatility but when i am talking about implied volatility i will not get this sigma from the underlying security i will get this sigma from the option market <coughs> i will get this sigma from the option market assuming okay the call option in the option market especially not all call options we are talking about the most liquid at the money call option probably this is at the money only so if i know that in the market right now this call option is not at uh, $4 this call option is priced at $6 so what i will do is i will adjust this sigma okay if it is 30% this is 4.91 if it is 40% 6.28 so probably at 38% yeah so somewhere around 38% should be the sigma because uh, the call option premium of 6.01 is very much matching with the market so probably even if i can do a little bit more 37.5 no 37.9 yeah somewhere around 37.9% should be the standard deviation or should be the volatility which means i am not referring to the underlying securities volatility anymore but i am going with the option market itself finding out the most liquid at the money option and for that making my model price equal to the market price and uh, uh, using a reverse engineering trying to find out what should be the value of the sigma where the market price will be the same as my model price so that kind of volatility that we are bringing out is what we call as the implied volatility so these are uh, the two things that we need to be uh, comfortable uh, with the historical volatility versus the implied volatility then the other uh, important uh, concept that has uh, come out with respect to the options is the options on other derivatives option could exist on a forward option could exist on a future so uh, or even option could exist on a swap if an option is present on a swap we call it as swap option which we'll deal slightly later but if an option is existing on a forward or in a future the here all we are talking of is when it is existing on a forward or a future just like your call option price c equal to s s not 
into n of d1 minus x by 1 plus r to the power t into n of d2, right? Now, s, when I look at it in terms of forward, it is nothing but f by 1 plus r to the power t, right? So, I can very well write it as f by 1 plus r to the power t n of d1 minus x by 1 plus r to the power t n of d2. So, simplifying it, 1 by 1 plus r to the power t f into n d1 minus x into n d2. This is what is the formula that I can use. So, either I can use 1 by 1 plus r to the power t or in a continuous form I can make it as e power minus r t. So, e power minus r t into the forward rate in multiplied by n d1 minus x multiplied by n d2. So, wherever the spot is there, even for a d1 formula, log f t by x plus, I don't need r now, right? So, it, it's as good as saying, okay, probably uh, s by x, right? So, I'll say log x, s is nothing, f is not, uh, x is nothing but f by e power r t f by e power r t into x plus r plus sigma squared by 2 into t by sigma root t this is what is our formula now this I can very well write it as so the log 1 by e power r t will simply become minus r t right so the, I'll keep this as log f by x and uh, log the plus log e 1 by e power r t plus r plus sigma squared by 2 into t log 1 by e power r t is nothing but log e power minus r t log e power minus r t is nothing but minus r t minus r t plus r t plus sigma squared t by 2 so that is where it becomes directly sigma squared by 2 into t by sigma root t so it's as simple as in the regular black scholes formula you substitute wherever s is there you substitute it by f by 1 plus r to the power t or more comfortably the continuous version of it f by e power r t then the formula which has been used for a black scholes uh, approach you can very well uh, use it for the valuing uh, the options on forwards as well as futures this is what typically is called as black formula scholes is not involved in this the blacks formula wherein the spot price is substituted with the present value of the forward price so that is what uh, is the mechanism that you can use to value the option same way put call parity also c plus x by 1 plus r to the power t equal to p plus s so when i am saying s here instead of s i will take it as f by 1 plus r to the power t so logically it is becoming c plus x minus f by 1 plus r to the power t equal to p or probably c minus uh, p equal to x minus f by 1 plus r to the power t now the simple way all these things is coming out is long call plus the long bond is equal to long put and especially when we are talking about the add the money option x and f should be the same option on a forward if we are talking of add the money these two should be the same which means the call should be equal to put especially for add the money forwards at the money forward the price of the call option should be the same as the price of the put option 
these are some of the things that we need to be comfortable with and apart from that there is an understanding between american and european options as far as this and this is concerned there is uh, no difference in case of american or european as far as the forwards are concerned because there is no benefit of early exercise whereas in case of futures there is uh, a benefit in case of uh, american options because in case of early exercise probably the mark to market could result in some value in our uh, account which could be reinvested to to get some additional amount so to get some additional returns the mark to market amount uh, on a daily settlement basis can very well be reinvested to earn some interest so what we could very well see is uh, in case of futures market probably the american options are more uh, valuable compared to the european options but as far as the forward markets are concerned there is no difference between an american option and a european option this is one more relationship that uh, needs to be uh, comfortable with especially uh, in terms of evaluating the difference uh, on the forwards versus the future options on forwards versus the futures so that's how we uh, complete the various uh, valuation processes uh, of options on various uh, securities i hope uh, uh, you are comfortable uh, with uh, the various uh, valuation mechanisms on the same in case you have any further queries regarding the same please get back to me by giving me a call on the number that i have given below or you can even send in an email at vamsidhar@paysgurus.com thanks a lot for listening to this uh, session thank you very much